You know, I don't, I, I hate to ask you about the, your, your life with Brian, but people are interested, you know, they want to, was it all glamour and flash and fun and everything and then the bubble burst? I mean, people want to know how these things happen and what they were like. Well, you, you start out and you think it's going to be a, you know, you don't think it's going to be crazy and, and uh, you don't know what it's going to be like, you know, but you start out with a normal type of marriage and who knows what, you know, life has in store for you. But how is it being married to a famous person? It was great. Really? Yeah. Oh. I, I, I had a lot of fun. I got to travel a lot. I got to meet a lot of people. I think it, it makes you grow up real fast mm -hmm. and... Uh, you get to live the exciting things that most people dream about. Like? Like uh, meeting famous people, like having a lot of money, uh, having maids, you know. Sure. <laughs> that kind Good of... tables at restaurants, right? right and fancy right, food and stuff right. like that. But after a while, do you get... All, no, I'll tell you, the best part about it, I think, is just being with someone exciting who's yeah. not boring. Brian wasn't boring at all. He was fun. He's a real kick. Do you ever get sick of it all, though? I mean, you know, people, you, you can get jaded if you have too many good things. I, you know, too many airplanes or too many cars or too many boats. And finally, people say, well, you know, we've got everything. Who needs all this? And you just get jaded by it all. Did that happen to you or Brian at all? Not really. Uh, Brian and I weren't pretentious in that way. We really weren't. Um, I don't... No, that he did crazy things. You know, he, he used his money in a different way. Like, mm -hmm. he'd go into a store and he'd see a display of maybe a whole uh, line of uh, Tiffany lamps. And he'd look and he'd go, I want all of them. Right. I want them just the way they are. And he'd buy, you know, 10 Tiffany lamps, have them installed ex the exact way they right. were in the store in our home. Right. So that was fun. Yeah. All right, let's take the first caller from Aaron Wilson on the line. You're on the air. Why don't you go ahead, please? Hello. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Fine. I just wanted to ask one question. I am in rock and roll. Uh, how was it back then as far as with you traveling with the guys, their wives and girlfriends? How did all of you get along? Uh, everyone got along real well. Uh, Brian really stopped touring after around, oh, I would say maybe three years. Uh, you know, he couldn't tour anymore. It was just too stressful for him. He couldn't be the uh, creative force of the Beach Boys anymore in that way. And uh, so we really didn't have that much of a touring life together. But when we did, it was a lot of fun. What about the jealousy that women might have for the groupies and the women hangers on for these rock stars? I mean, let's face it, they attract uh, very attractive ladies. They do, they do. And, uh, well, <laughs> what could they're there and, uh, you know, you try and give them the space to be there and you know that they're buying the records and you just hope that they're not going to, you know, stab you in the back, which a lot of them do. I'm mainly, you know, I, do, I really don't mind groupies. I just mind the people that gave Brian drugs to, you know, because they loved him and they wanted to do good for him and do anything he wanted. Could you see that coming? Oh, sure. You, yeah. could, you could see a person just like that. You know, I mean, Brian and I used to really fight about that a lot because I could see it and he couldn't. But he always went after the eccentric anyway. You know, he could walk into a room and if there were a hundred people in there and there was one person that was a little bit weird. Or different. Or different, he'd go right to him because that, that's what makes a, a genius, really, I think. Next caller on the line, won't you go ahead, please? You're on the air. Yeah, hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, Marilyn, I just wanted to say that... Uh during the time that you were dating Brian, I used to live up the block from you on Sierra Benita in West Hollywood. Huh? Ah, what's <laughs> your name? Actually, your sister Diane knows me better. Huh. Okay. Um, I was going to ask you two quick questions. One, I know you're getting back with the honeys again. Uh-huh. Is Ginger in that group still? Yes, Ginger Blake is my cousin and my yeah. sister Diane Ravel. Is she still married to Jack? Pardon me? Is Ginger still married to Jack? Huh? No, oh, no. Well, let's, okay. let's get her on here, too, and hey, talk about no, the Ginger is single at the moment, <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. okay. In fact, we're all single, all three of us. Okay, the other quick question I want to ask you was, uh, how did the turbulent years with Brian, how did that affect your daughter? My daughters? Well, uh, Brian and I split up when the girls were uh, 9 and 11. And it was just at the right age, I got them... I don't want to say I got them out of there. I just, you know, it was the right time to make the move. And it really didn't affect them that much. They miss him terribly now. They wish they could be with him, which is not possible because of his doctor. And uh, uh, thank God they're doing terrific. They're really great girls. Okay, thank you for your call, sir. The next caller is on the line. Why don't you go ahead, please? Hello. Hello? Hi. How did you meet him? 
Uh, I met Brian when I first started singing with the Honeys. I was only 14, and he was singing at a, a little uh, coffee house called Pandora's Box, and he was up there playing the guitar. Actually, Ginger was dating a guy who was writing with Brian. I didn't know. I didn't know anything about the Beach Boys. And Brian was up there playing, and I'm drinking this hot chocolate, and he goes, "Hey, can I have a sip?" He takes the hot chocolate from me, and he spills it all over me, and I'm going, "Who is this guy?" You know. Uh -huh. But did you like him when you met him? Yeah, everyone falls in love with Brian. He's just, he's like, like a teddy bear, you know? Okay, next caller on the line. Why don't you go ahead, please? Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, I would like to know whose idea was it to get, to divor get to the divorce, and if you had the chance, would you remarry him again? Woo. I knew that question was coming. Okay. Uh, Rough crowd here today. Huh? <laughs> yep. At least I'm not getting the other words. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Why call attention to it, Marilyn? <laughs> Actually, uh... Somebody wanted the recipe for duck. And we, we, didn't, we, we didn't have it, you know? <laughs> it was a mutual decision. I think that Brian and I had... We weren't getting along that well anymore. I mean, we, it was just going to be destructive. And we still love each other deeply. And it's better to end a relationship when you're not getting along and have that love. Yes. What was your other question? Hello. Marry him again? I said it... Oh, would I marry him again? Yeah. Well, uh... I don't think that he could ever be the person that I fell in love with, although I do love him. And uh, I don't know. I, he would have to change. There'd have to be some major changes major in the relationship changes, and, yes. and, and approaches. And yes, and I don't think that I'm for him now either. Mm -hmm. Do you think of him often? Sure, every day. Miss him a little? Yeah, I miss him a lot. Yeah, okay. We'll continue with Marilyn Wilson right after these words from our sponsors. years and I've done a lot of things on the road and have played with bands and I know how that lifestyle goes which brings me to my question is a lot of the you know the, you know, the gossip that can go on with musicians that go on the road and hear about what other bands are doing a lot of the reason that they said that Brian was not going on the road with the Beach Boys at that time was because of his drug use now was that true no, that was not true at the beginning. It just was too uh, grueling of a lifestyle for a very sensitive person, as Brian is. He needed to be home to create his music, to go into the studio while the guys were out on the road. They were in so much demand. That is the, uh, the initial reason. Then the drugs came later. You said that you and he used to fight about the drugs. Couldn't he finally perceive what this was doing to him? Didn't he finally catch on to the fact that he was hurting himself rather than helping himself with this stuff? Yeah, he, it, it, he, he couldn't do anything about it. He just had this need to expand his mind. And he, you know, he was hurting inside. And sometimes the drugs he made him feel better, mm -hmm. which we all know does not work. You know, it's only temporary. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that's what happened. Okay, next caller on the line. Why don't you go ahead, please? Hello. Oh, hi. Gosh, this is great. I can't believe it. Um, I just wanted to ask Marilyn if uh, she was an inspiration to any of the early songs. Well, I, I think I was. <laughs> yeah, the, the songs that I think he wrote about me were uh, um, God Only Knows. Um, sometimes it's, it's a little depressing because you get to hear them talk about what they really don't like in you anymore, you know? <laughs> like Caroline No, it went, where did, you, where did your long hair go? I was really depressed when I heard that song, but it was wonderful. Um, let's see. She's not the little girl I once knew. You know, I grew up. Mm -hmm. Don't Hurt My Little Sister was about me and my, my sisters. Brian didn't have any sisters. Uh, oh, God. He wrote a song called Marilyn Ravel. Were you flattered when you became part of his music? Oh, of course. Are you kidding? Oh, you know that we were the cheerleaders. The Honeys were the cheerleaders on Be True to Your School. No kidding. Yes. Okay. So, uh, the Honeys. Now, what, the are, honeys. What, what are the Honeys doing now? The Honeys, uh, we have a... Why do they call them the Honeys? The Honeys, okay. In the Beach Boys song, Surf and Safari, it said, uh, early in the morning we'll be riding along or something. The Honeys will be coming along. The Honeys are girl surfers. And our first record was Surfing Down the Swanee River. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you the are. are. But anyway, we have an album coming out in Sweden in around a month, another album. We've had an album out a couple years ago called Ecstasy. Uh, now we're in the studio right now making two new records, and we're, you know, we're real excited. So you're Please. Yeah, I'd like to say that uh, Ms. Wilson is a be very beautiful woman. Oh, thank you. And uh, I think that Brian is a fool to let go of somebody like her. I love you. <laughs> I, d I did not hear what the gentleman said. He said. Well, he said he said that Brian was a fool to let go of me. Thank you. 
Were there any questions for Marilyn or just a nice compliment, sir? Well, I'd like to ask her if uh, she's thinking of getting married again with any other man than Brian. And am I going to get married again? I'd like to one day. When the right man comes along. Do you have any other man in mind was the second part of the question. Oh, no, not at In other words, Marilyn, are you seeing anybody serious at this time is what this man wants to know. No, oh. not right now. Okay. Next caller is on the line. Won't you go ahead, please? Hello. Yes. My name is Sean, and uh, what I wanted to know was um, while you were with your husband, did you ever sing with the group? With the Beach Boys? Is that what you mean? The yes, Beach I just want to know, did you ever sing with the group itself? Yes, all the time. Uh, I think that I was on practically every album once we were married mm -hmm. and so were the other honeys on a lot of the albums uh i sang well you know we had a studio in our home and that when brian would need another part he would have me come in and sing the part with the guys and uh also he would have me come to the piano when he was creating the songs and i would he would have me sing the parts along with him so mm -hmm. he would hear how they sounded did you um uh, uh of course you knew about this uh, I, I lost my train of thought as i hit the phone here your reaction when james watt the then secretary of the interior and this whole ruckus about the beach boys singing in washington for the fourth of july that they couldn't sing there what, what did you think of that oh i thought it was ridiculous and i said wow what publicity the guys are going to get out of this it's going to help their career back up again which it did and one other loose end here in my mind you said in the previous segment when, uh, when talking to one of our callers that Brian could not see the children now because of his doctor. What yes. does that mean? Well, Brian is under uh, right now 24-hour therapy with this particular doctor. And the doctor kind of has the children down, maybe like around number 20, on the list of the things that Brian is supposed to get better at and do first, mm -hmm. which is, you know, horrible. So it's horrible. The children and the family should be first, and then comes the career, and then comes this, and then comes that. But uh, this doctor is, you know, brainwashing him at the moment. And none of us are really happy about it at all. But he is helping Brian also. Mm -hmm. He looks terrific. He's lost a lot of weight. He's off of drugs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we just want him back as a, you know, family member. And a father to the, two, yes. uh, to the, to the children. Well, yes. maybe if the progress is good, the doctor will bring the priority from 20 up to number four or five. Well, I, so. I, hope, I hope it's before uh, they're too old to see their daddy. Okay. Marilyn, thank you for coming on a program thank like you. this. I know it's difficult to talk about some of these things. When you're no, a real, I enjoyed it. All right. Yeah. You're a real trooper and I really appreciate thank it. You. Okay. We will continue and tell you about tomorrow.